So I always like to end out the semester with the future of AI. Where do I see things currently at? Where are they going? Obviously, this is just predictions for, I don't know, the next five years or so, and I re-record this video every single time, and I don't know, I get it maybe halfway right, maybe a quarter of the way right. So we'll see where, see where I land here. First of all, just some of the things that I see overall staying somewhat the same. It looks like this stuff is just changing at the speed of light, for sure. And it is. When I look at updating from, say, StyleGAN, three to stable diffusion that you could just generate these random faces that amazed me but now you can generate practically anything from a prompt and i'm seriously wondering where the field of gra like graphic illustrator is even going as a career path these days these are things obviously that are changing at at the speed of light but let me give you some some of the things that i think are the pillars that are staying the same First of all, the way that we train the neural networks, gradient descent, basically just taking the, deriv the partial derivative of every parameter, every weight in the model, uh, seeing the slope of the line and, and, and just descending to lower and lower and lower losses. Now there's all kinds of things that have been added like Atom and other training methods, but it's all still gradient descent, which is probably one of the least biologically plausible algorithms that, that that there is. And it's this has been here since, what, the 80s, I guess? So that's one thing that I'm definitely looking at. Will we ever have a training algorithm that replaces gradient descent? That would absolutely be pivotal. And I have no idea what that would be. Most of the non-gradient descent or the non-derivative-based uh, ones really are just good when you can't take a derivative of something or other very, very, very fringe case. For example, genetic algorithms, which were all the thing. I mean, genetics built our mind, but yet not that effective at training or evolving newer types of, of algorithms that has been shifted off into just a kind of a niche area. I don't know. I, I could certainly see in the future something modeled off of Darwinian type evolution, boy, there's got to be such a untapped potential when you look at when you look at nature and how how it's it's forced an incremental sort of improvement there. Another thing that is staying relatively stable is the transformer. So the transformer is absolutely the new kid on the block convolution neural networks and LSTMs, GRUs, those were kind of the, 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 the previous new kids on the block. LSTM, GRU are probably giving way to the transformer for sure, but convolution neural networks are still very much a part of like stable diffusion. And the the transformer, the attention is all you need transformer. That's, that's the new, that's the new pillar upon which a lot of the generative AI is being built. I have not seen the transformer change significantly over all of the GPTs and, and other things. And it's, it's been here at least, at least a few years. Generative AI, this I do feel, at least for me, this is something that kind of came, came out of nowhere. It's been here forever. There's this diagram that I have in my class, and I used to always show all these different types of AI. And then at the end, I'd be like, yeah, and there's this crazy thing called generative AI. It generates random sort of uh, stuff. Uh, and I covered it really, really very little. I mean, I talked about it like the deep belief neural networks that were there when Hinton was first figuring out some of the things that became deep learning. But now generative AI has, I, I see some people divide AI into predictive AI, which was everything before generative AI and generative AI. They, they almost, marketing people almost pose it like uh, the common era and before the common era. And then reinforcement learning, reinforcement learning was amazing for a while. I, I just don't see it living up to its potential at this point. It learned to play Atari games, amazing. It learned to play Go and chess better than the computers that beat the humans, 
amazing, amazing technology. But one of the problems with it is it needs near infinite data. It works great in games and things that can be completely simulated and you can have something running that basically just gives it enough examples, as many as it possibly has time to process and calculate the rewards and other sorts of things like that. I also saw OpenAI sort of drop, drop support for the OpenAI gym. It's now gymnasium ran by the, this, this other consortium. So I see the big names kind of moving away from the reinforcement learning. Certainly human in the loop, it, it's, it's good, but it's not really all that scalable. If the, if the action space, well, or if the environment that, it's the, that the actions are running against is the real world, you, you need a lot, a lot, a lot of training data to really have that be successful. And if you're just running Go in the computer's mind, then that's, that's quite effective. Certainly very useful for some of the autonomous vehicles as they send in this large, large amounts of, amounts of data. And then the other area that I think is huge for the future of artificial intelligence is reasoning. I know there are, there are many, many who, who pretty much think that the large language models are the singularity, that they are reasoning, that they've maybe even become sentient. And I don't completely, or really at all, buy that. Computational reasoning is one of the major, major crazy advances on the road to generative AI. I just don't think we're there yet. As you push the large language models out to the edges of their understanding, which is often how to program them because a lot of the programming techniques are relatively new that you're using with Langchain and with all these others, they just don't answer this really as well. The other thing that I think LLMs really need some concept of is learning. Sure, you can fine tune them, but then you have all kinds of things fraught with introducing hallucinations as you're fine tuning it. Very expensive to fine tune. You can use rags certainly and augment them with just the bit of information that you need, but these LLMs don't learn their weights stay the same, unless you're fine tuning, but there's, you can't tell it something, talk with it back and forth, have it understand what you're saying. And I have reached that point of understanding where ChatGPT or whoever I'm working with, is like, yes, okay, I understand what you're saying, Jeff. But then you go to the next chat conversation and it's all gone. It's, it's like these movies, like moment, like Memento or The Notebook, dealing with the person who has like retrograde amnesia. They're just not able to transform the short-term memory into the long-term memory. I'm also looking for convergence. So the technology that you use for stable diffusion is kind of this hourglass shaped, like an auto, auto encoder that is taking uh, images and predicting what noise you need to remove and going through the steps. That's, and, and then using the, uh, the embeddings that you use from the large language models to put the text into it for sure. So that's, that's common. But looking at something that unifies a lot of these technologies, something that, that basically makes what the transformer does, what the convolution neural network does, and what the autoencoder like you have with the, con the convolution networks, they're all just special cases then of this core technology that moves us one step further to generative AI. So at any rate, this is my thoughts of the future of AI. I hope you've enjoyed the course. Definitely subscribe to the channel so that you keep track of further things that I do. I do a lot more on this YouTube channel other than just this course. You can also follow me on GitHub, on LinkedIn, uh, um, on really any of my social media platforms that I have listed here and also in the description. Thank you for joining me for this course. Please click the subscribe button, click like if you, if you like this, and uh, best of luck in your AI journey.